everyone. It's good to be back again. Um, so if you guys remember from my last video, I talked quite a bit about the concept of the enemy and what it means. Um, what what it means to to regard somebody as an enemy, and what does it take to identify and to also segregate ourselves from the enemy. And today we'll be looking at a theory of the sovereign, the concept of the sovereign, by the German jurist and philosopher called Karl Schmitt. Um, so he was a pretty controversial philosopher, but also quite recognized um, among the German intellectuals. Um, he worked for the Nazi party at one point. And Smith's idea of the sovereign is that is somebody, somebody which belongs to an exceptional law and somebody who can exert an exceptional form of authority. So anything that is against the sovereign um, is regarded as antithetical or the enemy. But an estate or nations or whatever that is under the sovereign's jurisdiction is considered the subject and obedient to the sovereign. And this is, it is important to note that Carl Schmidt worked during the time after the end of the Weimar Republic. Um, so it was right after Hitler um, gained his fame um, and after Hitler's, during Hitler's reign in 1933. And Smith, Smith was talking about the suspension of law and the need for an urgent necessity, um, which, of course, he ultimately refers to the sovereign, um, to exert some special jurisdiction under special circumstances. So, this is a time, this is a time when Schmidt's work, the political theology, um, which I'll refer to in a minute, um, was published during the destabilizing of the Weimar Republic. And it was a time of national crisis. It was a time of national crisis, and it was a time where the need to have a strong ruler, a strong sovereign ruler, in a way, that is theologically based, to govern Germany, was required. So, in a sense, the sovereign was needed to rescue Germany from its collapse. And of course, Hitler, at the time, was an ideal figure to rescue the fallen state of Germany. And of course, as I said earlier, Whatever is, or whomever, who does, just because somebody does not necessarily um, de being disobedient to the sovereign law, or it is simply because somebody, for example, the Jews, who aren't part of the Aryan race, they would be segregated just, for the, just for the, from the basis that they aren't the German race. They would be segregated and misinformation or information about them, propaganda, would be spread to ultimately terminate their existence or their any cultural fragments of them. And it does come into question on, on whether or not this is a very whether or not this is part of God's work or his contingency um, or his 
providential agency, really, in providing a sovereign to rule that exceptional state. So for Schmidt, a political sovereignty is a secularized form of theological um, sovereignty. So in a sense, every politics, not just Germany at the time, with an exceptional ruler, of course, would have a strongly Christian basis with a God that rules, um, that, that provides the commandments for, its, for his people to obey. So does the Führer, um, who was Hitler at the time, um, who wanted to provide a disciplined, orderly state and so that the Germans would follow him to unite Germany into a single conformist culture, homogenous culture. And, of course, being the sovereign, he um, is somebody who is only bound to the estates or people only for fulfilling the promise in interest of the people. So this was in page 8. And this quote actually has reference to the Old Testament. Um, some references, you know, where, where God intervenes in every little matter. For example, um, during the time when the Israelites um, had Moses as their um, leader and they were challenged by the Pharaoh. It was a time of peril and God tries to intervene in everything and actually trying to test the Israelites' faith towards him. In the Old Testament, in um, the book of Exodus, Um, but of course, the sovereign is also somebody who is not bound under urgent necessity. So, sorry, I mean, he, he is bound under the necessity because he doesn't operate, he doesn't intervene on a regular basis during a normal time. And so can be correlated to the pandemic, to the COVID pandemic that just occurred in the last two years, that was at its peak. Um, that was a special circumstance. And it, it was required to have exceptional laws, laws that don't normally conform to the, um, to whatever is being um, in, executed um, within the community. But there is a there is a case, you know. There comes up to a point where, where we have to where I have to think whether this law and and whether the exercise of power or dominion by the sovereign can become borderlinely can 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 be borderline oppressive or borderline exploitative. So what is the goal? Goal ultimately, what is the goal for exercising this power? Is it to undermine the individuality or the freedom of the people? Or is it for the sake of the good? The good. Of course, there is this paradox where um, if God if God really cares for his people, um, he would not only provide freedom and free will for his people to do good, but also mercy in by limiting them. And it does make me question whether Hitler was actually following this line of thought. He probably didn't, I don't know, but this is just my opinion and my analysis. I think that it is important to question these kinds of issues because when you mix um, religion and especially coming from this um, basis of the sovereign into politics. And depending on the nature of the ruler as well, he can, he can turn um, that, that opportunity into something, something exploitative or something, something that is only 
um, exercise to fulfill his own self-interest. You know, oh, I'm a German and I, I belong to this race and I have the duty to fulfill the command and to um, to to preserve, to protect the um, to protect the purity of the German culture. Well, God never said anything about. I wouldn't say that God really had a had a clear um, opinion or a statement of of preserving your entity, except for or preserving your identity, except for really preserving or spreading the word about the monotheistic religion, um, or his word. And that in itself can be exclusive, or can be, um, can, can segregate some people. But it was until the, it, it, it was until Paul, actually, who said that Jews, Gentiles alike, can be united in spirit, even though they can't be united with God by flesh. I mean, the Gentiles, really. So, so coming back to Schmidt, the idea of the sovereign, or the idea of what is antithetical to the sovereign is unstable. And this, is, this works for Schmidt, because, like Hitler, he believed that or, well, he asserted that natural law, or human law in itself, is structured within their boundaries of limitations. And it operates under their, the nature of their will. And human will, human nature, or whatever you call it, it's unstable. It is um, inherently competitive, Darwinistic, and I would say um, evil as well. And this is really contrary to what Thomas Aquinas said about human nature, because Thomas Aquinas asserted that human nature, that it is possible for humans to work to adjust, um, to, to remove any forms of injustice and to form a peaceful conglomerate of peoples. I'm sorry, of a community. So, it is all about the survival of the fittest, like Hitler. Um, so, Schmidt's ideas are contrary to people like Thomas Hobbes, John Locke, or the rationalists like Immanuel Kant. So, Schmidt strongly believed that everybody you encounter is merely predator and prey, or predator and predator. There is no such thing as true neighborliness, because everybody would work towards their own self-interest. So, this is clearly informed in page 13 and 14. He referred to John Locke and Immanuel Kant to dispute their view of the state as a rational entity, because Schmidt doesn't ever say, has never said that the state is a rational entity in itself. That's why it needs a sovereign to rule. So, at the end of this talk, i just like to reflect, and I, I'm hoping that you could also reflect on the question on what happens when the sovereign becomes the norm. What happens if this whole, for example, um, oppressive or maybe not even oppressive um, regime of Hitler becomes the norm? You know, this, this form of exercise of power or this form of authority issued within society becomes the norm. What if it actually, for example, becomes the norm to to inject people with a certain kind of vaccine or medicine, regardless of their medical condition, simply because it is issued by the sovereign. 
by the ruler. Is that is that ethical? Is that Christian? What does God have to say about this? If if God really has mercy, if the sovereign really has mercy upon his people, wouldn't he provide um, freedom towards the people? Or does he actually try to limit the people's freedom and call it mercy? So yes, that's all I have to say for today's talk. Let me know what you think. Peace out.